for these WNBA players, sitting on the bench is a big step forward. Things haven't been the same since. Washington, 53, is in her 14th season as a Division I head coach, her second at Rutgers, and has three Big Ten Coach of the Year awards on her resume. But she would have followed an entirely different path if McGraw hadn't asked more than two decades ago whether she was interested in helping coach the Fighting Irish during the WNBA offseason. Washington was ahead of a growing trend of active WNBA players trying their hand at college coaching during the offseason. Two of them will face each other Wednesday night, when Maryland visits Michigan in a Big Ten matchup. Connecticut Sun Center, and former Terrapins All-American, Brianna Jones is on Maryland's staff, and Washington Mystics guard Ariel Atkins is an assistant with the Wolverines. Mystics prepare for a transition period as WNBA free agency begins. Kalia Copper, Rutgers, Ryan Howard, Florida, Rachel Banham, Minnesota, Ruthie Hebbard, TCU, Nutty Shahideman, Penn State, Katie Lou Samuelson, Vanderbilt, and Maddie Segrist, Villanova, are also on major college staffs this season. Their playing days continue, but they are taking advantage of the opportunity to do some advanced scouting on a possible career down the road. I discovered the joy of coaching by doing it with Coach McGraw, Washington said. I looked at it as, this is my off-season job. And I discovered my second act. I discovered my second career. I'm sure there's going to be some more players that do the same thing. Another option. The proliferation of WNBA players on college staffs has been the result of a perfect storm of factors. One of the biggest was an NCAA rule instituted in July that permitted teams to fill two additional assistant coach positions. My mind kind of immediately went to an active player, Michigan coach Kim Barnes Arico said. Once we were able to add that position, that's all I thought about. I would have been bummed if I would have had to go in a different direction. The growth and rising popularity of women's basketball have led to schools investing in their programs, which has made accepting an assistant coach position more financially viable for active players. That has provided an alternative path to the long-standing practice of playing overseas during the WNBA offseason to earn supplemental income. At the same time, the overseas option is being limited. The WNBA's collectively bargained prioritization rule goes into full effect this year, and players will be suspended for the season if they don't arrive by the start of training camp or May 1st, whichever is later. Many overseas seasons run past the start of league training camps and can last into the regular season. That has left players looking for other opportunities. Howard, the number one pick in the 2022 draft out of Kentucky, did not want to go back overseas this offseason after playing in Italy following her rookie year with the Atlanta Dream. She is now an assistant coach and director of player personnel at Florida, her mother's alma mater. Most of the people in my draft class and a tad bit older, Howard said, we don't really want to go overseas as much as I would say the vets in the league did when they were our age. Hebbard, a Chicago Sky forward, knew she didn't want to go overseas this offseason, either, especially with her infant son, Xavier. Instead, she joined TCU staff under coach Mark Campbell, who was an assistant at Oregon when Hebbard played there. The assistant roles give active players a chance to get a taste of coaching, but they also allow them to get in their own workouts and development time. The jobs provide gym and weight room access and plenty of players to work out with. Hebbard's typical days start with Pilates at 6.30 a.m. before she heads to the office for a lift, cardio, and maybe an on-court workout. She gets all that done before the team practices around 9.30. There's some office work. Then she heads home to spend time with Xavier around 2 p.m. before he goes to bed at 9. Then she goes back to work, watching film or games and working on scouting reports. It takes a lot of time, but I'm trying my best to be the best coach and the best mom, Hebbard said. Banham, a guard with the Minnesota Lynx, has turned into a meal prep expert as an assistant coach and the director of quality control at Minnesota. Her days are long between her coaching responsibilities and trying to squeeze in her own workouts. 
Being on the road is even more challenging. You sacrifice a little bit of sleep, a little bit of time with your family, sometimes eating properly, she said. I think more so now than ever, players are figuring out what they're doing with the rest of their life. It's cool that people are trying to figure out what is going to be next and how they can still impact the game in a different way. A testing ground. WNBA players have instant credibility with college competitors from the moment they walk through the door. They're living the life that the young ballers are hoping for, so when they speak, their words carry weight. But everything isn't always smooth for the active pros. The off-season positions vary in title and responsibility. Part of the point is to find out whether they like the job in the first place or maybe administrative duties suit them better. Many want to stay involved in the game when they aren't playing, and there are a variety of ways to do so. Copper's title at Rutgers is Director of Athletic Culture and Professional Development, and a primary duty for the Sky Forward is to show the Scarlet Knights what it takes to make it to the WNBA. She hadn't thought much about coaching before spending a season with Purdue University Northwest in 2020, and she enjoyed it enough to return when Washington, Rutgers' head coach, reached out. The 2021 WNBA Finals MVP is known for her intensity on the court, something the Scarlet Knights quickly discovered. I don't really have a lot of patience, so I never really thought that this was something that I could do, Copper said. Especially just thinking about how needy I was in college and some of my teammates, also. The most challenging part, it's a different era. Things are just different. If I can be 1000% honest, the kids might be a little bit softer this era. They're a little soft. I need them a little tougher. It's definitely eye-opening, Jones, who is coaching at Maryland while rehabbing a ruptured Achilles tendon and juggling WNBA marketing responsibilities, said of her new role. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still testing it all out. Added Atkins, have I always thought about coaching? No. Has it always been kind of in the back of my mind? Yeah. I think people are just figuring out what's working for them and doing it earlier. The big picture. The Women's National Basketball Players Association has wanted this for years. The organization prioritizes post-playing career opportunities, and this is one more avenue for exactly that. This has been a point of emphasis for the union for a long time, Executive Director Terry Jackson said. The ultimate goal is to keep more women contributing to the game beyond their playing days. Atkins said she feels a responsibility to share the knowledge that has been passed down to her, one way or another. That could be as a coach on any level. That could be in a front office or an athletic department. That could be through a personal foundation or something not formally connected to the WNBA or the NCAA. However it's done. Getting a foot in the door sooner rather than later is key, said UNPA Director of Player Relations Jaina Pelmarinelli. There are relationships to build and networking to do that's easier for active players. Not all of you are going to make this leak, a Pelmarinelli said she tells rookies. You're going in and taking another person's spot and their job and their livelihood and their benefits, and they're not going to just hand that to you. You have to go and earn that. We need to also think about what you can work on currently utilizing your position now and your connections that you have now to the game and your presence that you have now. What can you work on and develop that will prepare you for the next step of your career, whether or not that involves basketball. There have been long-standing issues within basketball and without centering on the disproportional number of women in leadership positions, and that fight has endured. The hope is these new opportunities can help address some of these inequities. Representation matters, and that's another reason college coaches are so eager to have active players on their staffs. Student athletes get to see people who look like them and have been down the same path. The presence of the WNBA players is beneficial to the college players, and the goal is that the experience will be beneficial to the pros down the road, too. Now nobody can say, well, you don't have folks in the pipeline, and folks don't have experience, Jackson said. That's not true. And it was probably never true. But it's definitely not true now. 
they're playing. They're getting the experience. And now they should be in the mix when these jobs become open and they're not playing anymore. They should be interviewed, and they should be hired. We should be seeing more women in coaching opportunities, because of what we're seeing right now. Coke's Washington never wanted to be a coach. She earned a law degree from Notre Dame and had every intention of practicing law whenever her WNBA playing career ended. Then she got a call from her college coach, Muffet McGraw, by Kareem Copeland.